Taurus 15. A man muffled up with a rakish silk hat. This guy's a snappy dresser. He wants to look good. And most people who dress up to look good, they're not only conforming with society's expectation that we were decent and somewhat presentable, they call it. Um, it's more than that. Most people who dress up are trying to give a message, to convey a personality. It's glamour in a magician's sense of casting a spell. You, you give out the image that you'd like the world to mistake, actually, for who you really are. So the image is partly to cover the authentic truth of yourself, cover up the flaws, and it's partly to proclaim an aspect of yourself which actually, it's not exactly false, but it's not yet realized, so it's more of a, an aspiration. And, and we, we look our best in order to create the image that we want the world to believe in, in order for us to actually grow into that, a fake it till you make it kind of exercise. And this is um, what we try to do, in, in, not only in, in how we dress, but how we speak and what we speak of and, and, and so on. We, we convey a version of ourselves to the world that's um, more of an affirmation than an authentic truth-telling exercise. And this is thought to be acceptable. I, I think as long as you're authentic with yourself and perhaps your close friends and your family and so on, so that you're not telling lies to yourself about who you really are, then I think this, this attitude of dressing up has no real harm in, in the esoteric world. Um, you do notice, though, that the more mature and respected a person gets, the more likely it is that their image and their authenticity within are absolutely in alignment. There, there's no glitch between how they appear and who they are. They represent themselves totally in the world. This, this is an unusual person. This is not a politician, for example, you know, nor a, a film star. You see the film stars and, and in, in the Golden Globe Awards or something, and they all have these very expensive gowns and suits and hairstyles and, and all that. And they're all looking the same, actually. And, and, and that's how you must be to, to work in Hollywood. And you, it's the same in, in political field. All of these people dress in exactly the same clothes, you know. And they're showing the world that they are whatever they, their lie is. I, I'm a politician, I wear a suit and tie, therefore you can trust me. And the very opposite is true, but that's the image that the, 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 the unthinking aspect of society takes on. If a man wears a suit, then he's a leader and I'll take, take his word, you know. Um, this um, falseness of being just doesn't check out on the level of authenticity. So we're not going that far. But the, the man in the rakish silk hat, he, he's going to look very different from everybody else. He's not forming, um, conforming to how it should be. He's actually dressing his own way. This is the difference. So if you're actually putting on a suit and tie to be obedient to conformity and with the rules and everything, that's one thing. If that tie that you, you put on is maybe silk and, and a strange color, and your suit is just a little bit unusual in its color, and, and, and your hat is, is very expressive of personality, if you're a woman particularly, and, and so on. If, if you go out of your way to make a statement of some idiosyncratic personality characteristic you'd like to develop, that's what we're talking about here. Now, once again, Jones and Rudyard look quite differently at the same symbol. And it's very interesting to comment on that, that these two guys, nobody has done more to study the Sabian symbols than, than Jones and Rudyard. Um, 
And they very often come up with a different approach. And it's a bit confusing because it's just one symbol and they see it quite differently until you actually get to beneath the surface of it. And here's an example of, of where on the face of it, um, Jones is concerned with the rakish silk hat and Rudyard is concerned with the um, man muffled up. He's, he's, he's cold, he's, he's facing a storm, he's going out in the rain and he's muffled up against the cold, wet weather and he's facing the storm. So Rudyard's coping on that and he's saying that it's really very appropriate indeed for us to go out of our way to cope with adversity. It's a totally different take on the interpretation of the sign. And yet it's there in the sign, the man is muffled up. It's, not, it's just not a man in a silk hat, it's a man muffled up. And it's not just a man muffled up against a storm, he's wearing a silk hat. So these two aspects are present within the image that Elsie Wheeler presented. And each study for Jones and Ridger actually somehow adds together to give us the whole picture that, that Elsie would have seen. And in this case, Jones is um, concentrating on the fake it till you make it in order to develop your character part of it. And Rudyard is saying, look, if you want to develop character, then you need to face adversity. That's what does it. It's one thing to move yourself into a realization of potential by copying somebody maybe who's already done that and, and seeing if it feels okay. Um, that's one way forward, but actually another way forward is, is becoming a different person, not just expressing the different person you want to be, but becoming a different person. And we, we only do this by taking on challenges that are burdensome, which are very difficult, where we're taken to the limit of our ability to cope with adversity. And I'm sure all of us have had moments periods, years sometimes in our lives, that we really had to cope. And it wasn't joyful, it was an exercise in can we cope. As an exercise to develop character, there's none better. So it's well worthwhile taking on burdens that you know will be burdensome, that you know that will challenge your ability to cope, in order to develop the character that goes with that. Also the skill, and other things, but the character is what we're discussing here, perfection, perfecting at least, of the character. So, there it is, two different ways of doing the same thing, seen differently by these two masters.